Hare Krishna. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Text one. Vyasa Uvacha Iti Bhuvanam Samstuya. Muninam dirga satrinam vritta kulapadik sutam bhakrikshakshauna kutrabit. Vyasadeva said, on hearing Sutta Goswami speak this, Saunaka Muni, who was the elderly, learned leader of all the rishis engaged in that prolonged Sacrificial, sacrificial ceremony congratulated Sutta Goswami by addressing him as follows. Text two. Shaunaka Uvacha Sutta Sutta Mahabhaga Vadeno Vadatam Vere Katam Bhagavatim Dunyam Sonaka said, O Sutta Goswami, you are the most fortunate and respected of all those who can speak and recite. Please relate the pious message of Srimad Bhagavatam, which was spoken by the great and powerful sage Sukadeva Goswami. Text 3. Kasmin Yuhe Pravitayam. Stane vakena hetuna kutak sancho di bakrishna tutavan samhitam munihi. In what period and at what place was this first begun? And why was this taken up? From where did Krishna Dvaipayana Vyasa, the great sage, get the inspiration to compile this literature? Text four. Tasya putro maha milkyo hi samadrin nirvikalpa kaha ekantamatirun nidro bhuto muta iveyate. He, Vyasadeva's son, was a great devotee, an equibalanced monist whose mind was always concentrated in monism. He was transcendental to mundane activities, <laughs> but being unexposed, he appeared like an ignorant person. Text 5. Vishwa Nuyantam Rishi Matmajam Apyak Naga Apyak Naknam Devyo Kriya Parida Durna Sutashya Chitram Tadviksha Prachati Munauj Chagadustavasti while Sri Vyasadeva was following his son, beautiful young damsels were bathing, who were bathing naked, covered their bodies with cloth. Although Sri Vyasadeva himself was not naked, but they had not done so when his son had passed. The, the sage inquired about this. And the young ladies replied that his son was purified and when looking at them, made no distinction between male and female, but the sage made such distinctions. Text six. Katham alaksita kalvehi samprapta kurijan galan unmatamuka jadavat how was he, Srila Sukadeva, the son of Vyasa, recognized by the citizens when he entered the city of Hastinapur, now Delhi, after wandering in the provinces of Kuru and Jangala, appearing like a madman, dumb and retarded? Text 7. <laughs> Atam Vapandavi Yashya 
How did it so happen that King Parikshit met this great sage, making it possible for this great transcendental essence of the Vedas, Bhagavatam, to be sung to him? Text 8. Sakubu hana matram hi grihe su grihe medinam avik sate maha bhaga tirti kurvam statashramam. He, Sukadeva Goswami, was accustomed at, to stay at the door of a householder only long enough for a cow to be milked, and he did this just to sanctify the residents. Text nine. Abhi man yusutam suta rahu bhagavat uptamam tashya janma mahasharyam karma nishagri nihinaha. It is said that Maharaj Parikshit is a great first class devotee of the Lord and that his birth and activities are all wonderful. Please tell us about him. Text ten. Sasam Rat Kashiva Hetu Pandu Namana Vatanaha Prayu Pavishu Gangayam Anadripya Di Rajriyam. He was a great emperor and possessed all the opulences of his acquired kingdom. He was so exalted that he was increasing the prestige of the Pandu dynasty. Why did he give up everything to sit down on the bank of the Ganges and fast until death? Text 11. Naman tiyatta de niketa mat manaha shivaya hani danani shatravaha katam shavirakshriyam angadushtyayam he was such a great emperor that all his enemies would come and bow down at his feet and surrender all their wealth for their own benefit. He was full of youth and strength, and he possessed kingly opulences that were difficult to give up. Why did he want to give up everything, including his life? Text 12. Shivaya Lokashya Bhavaya Bhutaye Ya Uttama Shloka Paraya Najanaha Jeevanti Natmatam Asal Parashrayam Mumosha Nirvidya Kuto Kalevaram those who are devoted to the cause of the personality of Godhead live only for the welfare development and happiness of others. They do not live for any selfish interest. So even though the Emperor Parikshit was free from all attachment to worldly possessions, he could, he, how could he give up his mortal body, which was the shelter for others? Text 13. Tat sarvam we know that you are ex you are expert in the meaning of all subjects except some portions of the Vedas and thus you can clearly explain the answers to all the questions we have just put to you text 14. Sutta Uvacha Dwapare Samanuprapte Shrutiye Yuga Padyaye Yatak Parasha Pradyuhi Vasavyam Kalaya Harihi. Sutta Goswami said when the second millennium overlapped the third, <coughs> the great sage Vyasadeva was born to. Parasara in the womb of Satyavati, the daughter of Vasu. 
x15 sakada shit saves vadya upas prishya jalam suchihi vivikta ek asina uditera vimandale once upon a time he vyasadeva as the sun rose took his morning ablution in the waters of the saraswati and sat alone to concentrate text 16 Para Vairakshna Hasa Vishihi Kale Na Vyakta Ram Hasa Yuga Dharma Vyatikaram Raptam Bhuvi Yuhe Yuhe The great sage Vyasadeva saw anomalies in the duties of the millennium. This happens on the earth in different ages due to the unseen force of time. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhu ji Hare Krishna Prabhu ji Hare Krishna I'll make you the host now Okay thank you So let me share the so this is the words we are going to discuss today uh, i guess everyone can see yes prabhu ji yeah so let me move to that screen here and yeah so this is a very this is the introduction of uh, the glories of maharaj parikshit Uh, so let's start om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya abhimanyu sutam sut rahur bhagavato tamam tasya janma mahasharyam karmani ch gruhinah abhimanyu sutam sut rahur bhagavato tamam tasya janma mahasharyam कर्माणि च गृहिणी कर्माणि च गृहिणी सो लेट्स रीड वर्ड बाय वर्ड ट्रांसलेशन एंड देन वी विल रीड द ट्रांसलेशन एंड so abhimanyu sutam son of abhimanyu suta it's addressed to o suta means suta goswami prahu it is said to be bhagavata uttamam the first class devotee of the lord tasya his janma birth mahaascharyam very wonderful karmani uh, activity and grihini please speak uh, uh grini grini hi i'm i'm mixed getting bit mixed up uh grini hi please speak to um and na na is us so translation is it is said that maharaj parikshit is a great first class devotee of the lord and that his birth and activities are all wonderful please tell us about him report by shlatukar uh, the birth of maharaj parikshit is wonderful because in the womb of his mother he was protected by the personality of god he shri krishna his activities are also wonderful because he chastised kali who was attempting to kill a cow to kill a cow means to end human civilization uh, he wanted to protect the cow from being killed by a great representative of sin his death is also wonderful because he got previous notice uh, of his death which is wonderful for any mortal being 
and thus he prepared himself for passing away by sitting down on the bank of the Ganges and hearing the transcendental activities of the Lord. During all the days he heard Bhagavatam, he did not take food or drink, nor did he sleep a moment. So everything about him is wonderful and his activities are worth hearing attentively. The desire is expressed herein to hear about him in detail. So, yes, we'll, I'll, we'll chant the invocation again. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Narayanam Namaskritya Naram Jeva Narottamam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Tato Jeva Mudire Nashtaprayeshu Abhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttam Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtaki Yam Pravrajeta Manupet Mopet Kritim Vipayanam Virahata Taraju Ava Putre Titan Mayatayo Taravo Vinedus Sam Sarvabhu Taradayam Vimana Tosmi so let's stand the verse again and read the translation and then we will start our discussion. Abhimanyu sutam sutta prahur bhagavatottamam tasya janma mahascharyam karmani cha grunihi naha. Grunihi naha. Yeah, I was saying grunihi, that's wrong. Uh, so apologies for that. It is said that Maharaj Parikshit is a great first class devotee of the Lord and that his birth and activities are all wonderful. Please tell us about him. So, yeah. Here we can see yesterday Shamhari Prabhu was giving all the details about Shukde Goswami, the glories of the spiritual master of uh, Maharaj Parikshit. And today we will be discussing the glories of um, the receiver of Srimad Bhagavatam, who is Maharaj Parikshit. So, if we see the background as we read the um, verses and the, recited the verse and verses and read the translation, it's basically the questions are asked by Shonak Rushi to um, Sutta Goswami. Okay. And O son of Abhima, the son of Abhimanyu, he's asking, O Sutta, who is Sutta Goswami. So, the inquisitiveness of Shavnak Rishi is, is something amazing, some wonderful, because we all are getting benefited by his uh, inquisitiveness. And correct, right type of inquisitiveness is when person asked, asked correct questions at the right situation and to the right person. And that's what Shonak is uh, asking the questions to uh, Sutta Goswami. So he is asking questions on behalf of all the humanity. His, his, his very munificent personality, all the Rishis who are assembled in the Naimisharanya, they're all great personalities. So they are asking questions to Sutta Goswami uh, for the benefit of the Rishis who are assembled there and all the people who are going to recite and study Srimad Bhagavatam um, in this age of Kali Yuga. So, to receive the full benefit of Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavatam to everybody, the reciter will be benefited, the listeners will be benefited, and the people who are going to study later on, they will also be benefited. So that's the glory of this uh, literature. Um, and here, important point um, from every verse, every shloka, we try to absorb, we try to grab what we can take away from this. So here, the highlight of this verse, the shloka, is the qualification of Maharaj Parikshit. Um, what is Maharaj, Maharaj Parikshit's uh, right from his birth uh, till his departure from this world? Everything is glorious. Everything is wonderful. As Sila Prabhupada says in the, in the purport here, that his uh, departure is wonderful. So everything about him is wonderful. That's what he's saying here. And his activities 
are worth hearing attentively just to uh, understand focus uh, how great maharaj parikshit is that itself is a wonderful meditation that's what propad is indicating here so maharaj parikshit is a role model for all the leaders yeah. if we try to relate uh, the greatness of maharaj parikshit to in our day to day life um, what we can see is um, he is a role model how to uh, remain equipoised how to be a leader how to be a king how to rule and how to be in the mood of servant everything is uh, if you if we study the life of maharaj parikshit it's it's something uh, we should be um, we should be keeping that uh, in our in our daily standards um and how should they go so me uh, was recognized if here two personalities we are going to relate to the spiritual master and the disciple shukdev goswami was not recognized by the common people um, as a great personality so as uh, you we all have um, gone through the discussions by uh, from madhukumari mataji and uh, shamari prabhu and every all the eloquent speakers um he looked like a madman a deranged person um but how a great personality should be recognized and shila prabhupad is giving us the insight here about the how the great personality should be recognized um many people will try to look at something like a great personality people want to follow whom the person who is useful to them or somebody who who surprises them um with something unusual for example uh, magical tricks um we if we every day uh, what we look for for the material pleasures something type something surprising something which is um mesmerizes which will entertain our mind that's what usually people look for um and again we will see that in 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 few minutes all the um, happiness or pleasures people seek in in whatever prominent mode of material nature uh, that person is in um those people who are more towards the mode of goodness their pleasure seeking is a different level mode of passion is at a different level and mode of ignorance is uh, is a different type of pleasure seeking those so we, we will go through that in 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 few minutes um so as we say people look for some we can say um cheap type of attractions material attractions to follow example some mystic siddhi or some magical tricks um or they will look for some eloquent speech very mesmerizing speech the person who can entertain in terms of some for example music or somebody is very uh, has an attractive appearance and so people follow that and for some reason so they they find some kind of um entertainment or um some kind of surprises in terms of their personality uh, so that is a materialistic person's approach towards the um towards the people whom they want to uh, follow but the main focus um in case of the transcendental person or the spiritual person is always um the person who is a living bhagavatam who is a perfect devotee of the lord and a lot of times people um those who are uh, spiritually inclined um they will have that um they will look for the um what do you call spiritual literature or uh, spiritual aspect for four different reasons when first is as lord says in bhagavad gita rp the person who is distressed that person will seek shelter that what would what would be the uh, question coming to their mind why do i have to go through miseries 
and that person will have that kind of arth arth means distressed so that person will will try to take shelter of the spiritual literature and the devotional service but there will be ulterior motive that my misery should go away so that is a lower motivation the second lower motivation and we will come to what shila bhakti vinod thakur also gives in a similar perspective of the people who come towards the to towards the religious aspects or the spiritual uh, life so second type is a lobha or the person who is arth arth arthi arth means money or the wealth arthi arth means who is distressed because of money who is seek who is greedy that person will also um, seek um, some expectation some some shelter so he will think that um, nobody in the world can give me that but somebody who is celestial personality who is transcendental who is a creator of this can give me some uh, pleasure in terms of my uh, in terms of the money so that is um, the person who is distressed what patinot thakur says in in those two perspectives the first is bhaya bhaya means um mm. fear so if we see some of the spiritual paths the people will say god fearing so they have that fear if i don't do this i will get punished so that's the very lower motivation to follow the spiritual aspects or to, to follow the spiritual path second is lobha greed i want five rup i am giving five rupees or five pounds or five dollars and i should get some 500 5000 5 million dollars pounds rupees in back so that is kind of trading arth arthi fourth a third motivation is a uh, higher motivation we saw about two lower motivations third motivation is kartavya buddhi or the person who is jignasu um, uh, the, the inquisitiveness uh, kartavya buddhi is this machinery this world is a creator has some purpose behind creation of this everything it is working so wonderful and there has to be some purpose for my existence as well the person who has created he is so magnanimous he is so wonderful <clears throat> or the entity who has created me and i should follow the law of this world and that is why the third type of person who will follow the spiritual path so that, that is kartavya buddhi uh, or jignasu who is inquisitive and the fourth per, fourth person who is gnani uh, he that person says that yes it is my responsibility to understand the spirituality to understand the literature and follow this path a bhakti vinod thakur gives the higher perspective of that he says prema because there is a kind there is no ulterior motive it is unconditional and because of that um unconditional unconditional nature where it comes to it comes to service that is prema and that path of prema is the highest motivation so that's what uh, four aspects why people will come to spiritual path so what are those um in bhagavad gita perspective or in bhagavad gita explanations arthi arth arthi um jignasu and adnani yeah uh, in jaiva dharma how bhakti vinod thakur gives the details of that uh, bhaya which is fear lobha which is greed third one is kartavya buddhi sense of duty it's like our parents they they are our parents and i need to serve my parents i need to uh, follow their instructions their orders and that is the third one and fourth one is prema it is whether that person likes me or hates me but i have i am convinced that there is a sense of love um though apparently the uh, i am getting some experience which which i am not looking forward to but still i have that sense of love i have to love that person so that is prema but you not have to use that um in, the, in that's the fourth perspective so our primary objective should be to look at the qualities of mode of goodness so uh, in the the person whom whom we want to follow 
how that person should be um look we should look we, we if we are looking at somebody higher up and we want to say that yes i like this person i want to follow his instructions how that person should be what should be that criteria <clears throat> excuse me the first is the person should always be pleasant the second criteria is the person should always be honest the third one there should be simplicity there should not be cryptic type of motivations or no ulterior motivations behind having the um, discussions or any kind of relationship so there should be simplicity but next one the person should be compassionate then the uh, obviously if the person is compassionate the quality comes is the per, per, per the person should be forgiving and he should be equipoised he should not, the person should not get disturbed by the um, trials and tribulations of the material nature and then obviously if the person won't have that pride so if there is no pride the person will be non envious we should be following that kind of person who is in the mode of goodness is that enough if the person is in mode of goodness and has all the qualities we just went through pleasant honest simple compassionate forgiving equipoised and non envious obviously there that person will have the um, have the mood of devotion servitude uh, it will be there and that path of bhakti uh, will be uh, manifesting there in that person's personality in the behavior and the, in and that's why the devotee who is not only following these all these virtues we talked about he is in a pure mode of goodness the pure devotee and we can see that in case of all our acharyas they were all they were they had all these qualities but the most important quality of that vishuddha sattva of that pure mode of goodness that they were uh, devotee of the lord they they were not um, impersonalists they were in, they were compassionate they were loving they were caring because they had that primary objective of love towards the supreme personality of godhead the loving exchange and that's what chaitanya mahaprabhu came and he gave it to the entire world uh shila shukdev goswami was as uh, shamari prabhu was explaining yesterday he was always in vishuddha sattva he was not responding to the taunts of the or the harassment uh, which was made or making he was made fun of by children and women uh, uh, and he was not disturbed by that so you, we can see the quality of being a pupoys he was uh, simple he was compassionate he was forgiving and he was non envious um <clears throat> to recognize a person in pure mode of goodness a person should be at least the to recognize the person like shukdev goswami the next the uh, who is the greatness of shukdev shukdev goswami uh, can be understood by a person who is in at least in mode of goodness correct if there is someone who is in mode of ignorance or in passion that person will not understand the greatness of the person who is in a vishuddha sattva who is in a highest uh, mode of um, uh, with of transcendental mode uh, who is in a spiritual uh, who is completely spiritually uh, enlightened personality so here we can see that maharaj parikshit he immediately he for him being a disciple of shukde goswami uh, and receiving the bhagavatam maharaj parikshit was also in vishuddha sattva in a pure mode of goodness um, and that's what we are coming to this purport so let's read the purport again this was just a background the churning to understand the greatness of maharaj parikshit uh, why shukde goswami immediately Uh, he when he came and when he started talking uh, discussing shrimad bhagavatam uh, because <coughs> maharaj parikshit received him and uh, shukdev goswami was received uh, welcomed by his father vyasadev narad muni and everybody uh, 
when my parikshit maharaj said that now i am going to fast and just listen to the glories of the supreme personality of god and um, <clears throat> excuse me so let's read the purport and then we will uh, start our discussion uh, further the birth of maharaj parikshit is wonderful because in the womb of his mother he was protected by the personality of god head sri krishna his activities are also wonderful because he chastised kali so we can see here he maharaj parikshit was in vishuddha sattva he could not he was compassionate um, who yeah who was attempting to killing a, to kill a cow so that is the uh, that is the quality of compassion we just discussed about some of the qualities um maharaj parikshit was always you know he was always pleasant and he was always uh, uh, compassionate towards his citizens and all his subjects of his uh, of his kingdom of his em- empire to kill cows means to end human civilization so that means he had the clear understanding of how human civilization should be he wanted to protect the cow uh, from being killed by a great representative of sin so he was going to kill the uh, demon kali but because that is the this is the age of kali and this is lord's arrangement that if the people of this who are in this age as uh, sudha goswami explains later prayanal pavisha sarve kala vismin kala vismin yuge janha manda sumanda matayo manda bhagya vipadruta so that is the description of the of the people in a kali yuga who are, how are they um prayan alpa yusha sarve alpa yusha means they are short lived uh, kala vismin yuge janha their the quality the good qualities are always diminishing in this age every as time progress um, progresses there is another verse in the in the 12th canto which is quite heavy um, in terms of the de- description of the people of kaliyu we will uh, if time permits we will discuss that as well little later so mandaha sumand matayo they are dull um, their um, brain is not very they is not very functioning properly mand bhagya their uh, fate their fortune is also not very good uh, their fate is not very very good mand bhagya hypadruta and they are always distressed distressed very hypocritical uh, and they are aggressive they are always quarreling that kind of people are in kali so for this is the age of that demon uh, kali and by the arrangement of the lord um the kali is here in is still residing uh, in at at the four places we will we will we will discuss that in few later verses it will come to uh, the discussion anyway so his death is also wonderful because he got he got previous notice of his death um which is wonderful for any mortal being and thus he prepared himself for passing away by sitting down on the bank of the ganges and hearing transcendental activities of the lord very interesting point here death is wonderful because he got previous death previous notice of his death so what to take away from this verse if someone comes to know some bad news going to happen in next few days in next one month or next in in one year there are two possibilities one per, one possibility is the person will get depressed and say okay now give up everything and then have a rest of the time is going miserably <clears throat> second possibility is the person will say okay i am going to face the rough time so i will prepare myself um as a one gorang prabhu is telling that uh, if there is going to be a storm or some tornado or some tsunami um and if the person has a choice to 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 be to be situated somewhere far above the uh, about the disaster going to happen for example in plane or somewhere up in the sky for whatever span of time and just to see how it is happening there will be compassion but the person will not get affected by that 
in the same way, the material trials and tribulations, if the person can elevate the consciousness to, to such a level that, that the, all the rough part or all the happiness and sadness will not get affected uh, to, uh, to that person if that, because the person's consciousness is very elevated. That is the best thing to happen. And that's what, uh, when we get any notice of death or any, any rough time, that's how we should prepare ourselves. So that's the takeaway from this, which is wonderful for any mortal being. That's what Prabhupada is trying to tell us. And thus he prepared himself for passing away by sitting down on the bank of Ganga. Now, how, how, how Parikshit Maharaj's thinking is, it's very interesting or very important for us to understand. Uh, Ganga, where it is originating from? From the uh, lotus foot of uh, the Supreme Personality of God, from Vamandu. Um, so Ganga is always situated at the lotus feet of the Lord. Um, sitting down on the bank of the Ganga, that means he is there in the association of the pure devotee of the Lord. He is sitting at the lotus feet of the Lord. Yeah, Hearing the transcendental activities of the Lord. So obviously he is not hearing anything mundane transcendental activities of the Lord and the Lord is not different. So he is associating with the Lord. So as we say, the first the verse which is related to the first part, not getting previous notice of his death is Matrasparshastu Kamteya Shitoshna Sukadukhara Agama Paino Nitya Stamsi Fikshastu Bharata As Lord says in Bhagavad Gita 2.14 that we should be uh, tolerating these um, happiness and dis distress of this material world um, as the seasons of uh, heat and cold. And that's how our consciousness should be. If we get this, not only um, if we get previous notice of um, sad or, or death or anything bad, but for everything, our consciousness, the elevating our consciousness to a higher level, that should be the objective. <clears throat> so he heard Srimad Bhagavatam. Yeah by sitting down on the bank of uh, Mother Ganga and hearing the transcendental activities of the Lord. What is the worst um, anyone can, uh, can, can give any idea, any clue? How, what verse we can relate to from Bhagavad Gita? Okay, 10th chapter. It's part of the Chatushloki Gita. So the verse is Machita Madgata Prana Bodhayanta Parasparam Kantascha Mamnityam Tushanti Charamantich. The devotees of the Lord, Lord is saying that they always talk about me. Yeah. Machita Madgata Prana. Their life and soul is to just to discuss about my transcendental activities. Bodhayanta Parasparam. So here Shukdev Goswami and Parikshit Maharaj and all the great personalities, they, will, they were going to discuss the transcendental activities of the Lord. Every day, for seven days, they were just day and night, every moment they were discussing the uh, glories of and transcendental activities of the Lord, which is basically associating with the Lord. Kathayantascha maam nityam. Nityam means every day. Tushyanticha ramanticha. So they were completely contented, they were satisfied, and they were engrossed in it. And that is what Srimad Bhagavatam is giving us here. During all the days he heard Bhagavatam, he did not take food or drink, nor did he sleep a moment. So he was completely absorbed and because of that absorption, there was no need for him to have any food or drink and no need to sleep. So not only here, another implicit point we can think of is Parikshit Maharaj was of course, but Shukdev Goswami who was speaking to Srimad Bhagavatam, he was also not taking any food or drink or anyone else who was there, uh, who was listening to Srimad Bhagavatam, they were also in the same situation, in the same state. They, there was no need of food, drink or sleep uh, for any moment. Uh, we, can, <clears throat> we can see the glory of Srimad Bhagavatam. How 
intensely we should be listening to uh, Srimad Bhagavatam. So everything about him is wonderful. And obviously we just discussed that. Um, his activities are worth hearing attentively. So it's his consciousness, basically. We, uh, that's what we should be focusing on. The desire is expressed herein to hear about him in detail. So let's discuss a bit more about him. Uh, this, how was Maharaj Parikshit? Here, Maharaj Parikshit was eager to listen to the essence of this entire Vedic literature, the, uh, the Pakva Phala, uh, the ripened fruit, uh, which is touched by the mouth the current speak, speaker, uh, his, his spiritual master. Um, most qualified person whose objective of life is to glorify and preach the path of bhakti, who we are talking about, Shabda Goswami. And here the pre speaker is also truly detached. A maximum time he would spend at one place, um, yeah, the speaker is detached, who is a Shabda Goswami, as Shamari Prabhu was telling yesterday, is half time taken to milk a cow. Um, once, uh, let's uh, this, uh, let's talk about uh, how how glorious um, Shila Prabhupada is, who is describing the glory of uh, Shukdev Goswami. So there was a once what happened that uh, an arrogant university student in US. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what was the place. Probably Texas or Pennsylvania somewhere. Um, he asked Shila Prabhupada. Why have you come here as a beggar? What is there to uh, for for you to give us? There is nothing. You are you are taking everything. Why why do you want to take something from here? You are and as we can see, the quality of Acharya, the person who is perfectly poised. Uh, Shila Prabhupada had that perfect presence of mind, perfect control. He said, I have come here to give you something. I am a giver. The richest person is Krishna. And all opulences of this creation belong to him. Your university education will not give you anything like that. The, what I am giving, I am going to give you. The spiritual culture I am going to give you is a culture of giving. Non-spiritual culture is a culture of exploitation. Such an amazing answer, such a perfect um, answer, with the perfect demeanor, uh, Srila Prabhupada gave it to that uh, student, and he couldn't say anything. He, he just um, he was completely defeated by the uh, perfection of that answer. Uh, so what it tells is the mood of a devotee, um, since we follow the mood of uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, is to give Krishna consciousness in the form of books, in the form of prasadam, in the form of compassion. So our mood is the mood of giving. Obviously, donations, volunteering, um, distributing books, knowledge, the knowledge, everything is part of that. And this is why this is necessary. This is necessary for our purification. Um, once uh, somebody, again, one of the, I was, I was, I'm not sure whether he was a disciple or not, but uh, he said to Prabhupada that I'm going to leave uh, this movement and um, there is, there is far too much uh, dependency on me. And Prabhupada just smiled and he said, uh, this is not you and you or me or anybody. This is the mission of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is the mission of Mahaprabhu Chaitanya. And whether you or me, we leave, it doesn't matter. This mission will continue. Only thing is, whether we will get, we are going to get benefited by this mission or not. And whether you are going to be part of this mission or not, or you are going to be the loser. That's the only thing you need to consider. It doesn't matter whether, um, you leave and this mission will be unsuccessful. That's not possible. It will continue. It will be, it is a glorious mission. 
the movement will flourish and it will continue. Um, we can see Srila Prabhupada's conviction and his, uh, again, the perfect answer um, at the right situation. Uh, so, as we were talking that we, sh we can, um, our contribution should be to distribute prasadam, um, distribute books, um, do the volunteering, uh, contribute to the mission of uh, glorification of the Lord by giving certain types of donation. Donation can be money, donation can be our time, donation can be our talents um, for the uh, distributing uh, this uh, path of bhakti, to preach this path of bhakti. So Maharaj Parikshit was a first class devotee and um, all the questions, um, the answer to this question, how glorious um, Ma Maharaj Parikshit was, that's what Shonakrishi is asking. The, I think uh, in the first canto, chapter 16, 17, 18, are fully dedicated for this. As uh, we move further, as we progress, we will be discussing the glories of um, Maharaj Parikshit anyway. And he, what was his lineage? He was a grandson of Pandavas, perfect lineage and samskaras he had. Um, very, uh, very perfect, um, what do you call, the samskaras or the, where his, his grandparents were. Um, there is a verse uh, Shukta Goswami describes about the Maharaj Yudhishthir. The verse is like this um, about Maharaj Yudhishthir. Apipala Dharma Raja, um, Apipala Dharma Raja, uh, just a moment, let me think about it. Pitruvat Ranjayan Praja, Nispruha Sarva Kamibhya, Krishna Padanu Sevaya. So, what that verse is telling us, Apipala Dharma Raja, he was, um, he was a perfectly situated Dharma Raja. He's a, in a, as a, besides a Dvartha Alankar, he's saying he was the perfect ruler according to religious principle, Dharma Raja, and that was the name given to him as well, uh, because he's the son of Dharma, who is the, whose son he is, uh, Yamraj, who is the, who, who sets the rules of what is right and what is wrong. Um, and accordingly, it is the, the person who is a wrongdoer receives a punishment. So, Apipala Dharma Raja, Pitruvat Ranjayan Praja, who was his actual um, father in terms of his, uh, his lineage, Pandu, who ruled the kingdom perfectly when he was a, he was a king. Pitruvat Ranjayan Praja, his uh, praja means all his kingdom was in was perfectly happy when uh, Maharaj Pandu was the ruler. Nispruha Sarva Kamin, uh, all the worldly desires, he was completely detached from, from that. Nispruha, he was not uh, attached to any of his worldly desires. Sarva Kamibhya. Kama means literal meaning of Kama is lust. But uh, all the other five uh, desires of all the five enemies are related to lust eventually. Now that's what the third chapter of Bhagavad Gita is telling us. Uh, Lord has uh, explained it fairly elaborately. So, Kama Krodha Loba Madha Moha Matsara. So, first is Kama, that is lust. Apipala Dharma Raja, Pitruva Tranjayan Praja, Nispruha Sarva Kama Bhya, Krishna Padanu Sevaya. That's the last part of this verse. So, all the qualities he had. Why? Because he was always serving the lotus feet of lotus feet of the lord krishna padanu sevaya seva means to serve krishna padanu means he was serving the lotus feet of the lord he was a completely surrendered personality so um, everything about maharaj parikshit is extraordinary um, um, if later on we will be in in after a few more days we will be discussing um, the story of ashwatthama and how um, Maharaj Parikshit received, he saw the Supreme Lord, how Lord entered the womb of Mother Uttara and how he was saved, how the new body was received by Maharaj Parikshit, uh, his, his birth and later on his kingdom and, and how he becomes emperor. So all the glorious part that will come in discussion anyway. Uh, he's a Raja Rishi. 
he's a completely he's a rishi he has the all the qualities of sages but he is a king as well so that those are um, that exalted kings are called raj rishi because as time comes he can just give up everything all the kingdom all the opulences and he can just uh, follow the path of renunciation so that kind of detachment and uh, for the emperor of this entire world is uh, those personalities are called rajarishi um and that's why shla prabhupad says all the qualities are wonderful uh, he was maharaj parikshit was such an exalted personality that as soon as um the, the time came he just retired when he when he got the curse from uh, um from uh, shringi son of uh, shamikrishi uh, so he just retired and sat at the bank of ganga and then started uh, and started receiving shrimad bhagavatam from shukdev goswami um if we try to just meditate close our eyes and meditate on on this particular part just try to imagine entire world was ruled by one person maharaj parikshit and he just accepted that curse as the will of the lord gave up everything the just um no opulences sat at the bank of ganga just to receive the the, the ultimate nectar of shrimad bhagavatam such an amazing um so why he received the curse because um his thirst was not quenched the material th- the uh, he he was he was incredibly thirsty in that uh, uh, in the forest and now for seven days there was no thirst there was no hunger there was no sleep nothing so he was just listening to the um transcendental activities of uh, from shrimad bhagavatam um well the intelligence beauty strength fame and renunciation all all the opulences which lord has at the infinite um quantity um unlimited maharaj parikshit had access to certain percentage of that um, opulences of in in the material terms and still he knew exactly how to use these opulences in the service of the lord so at the end of course when he was a king he used his intelligence and we can read that uh, see that in this for in this purport here he was ready to kill that uh, kali when the uh, kali surrendered to him he gave him the right places where he can stay um that is the when where, where there is a greed where there is intoxication where there is a illicit sex and when they where wherever there is gambling that's where kali is and that's why prabhupada has given us those uh, um four regulatory principles um that that area where kali is residing in, in this age of coral and hypocrisy so maharaj parikshit was magnanimous his strength wealth everything was perfect but when the time came he used the perfect opulence of renunciation and he sat at the bank of mother ganga um he accepted the curse with all honesty and humility and he used it as a stepping stone to for his ultimate surrender um though he was perfectly capable to nullify that curse and uh, continue uh, ruling his kingdom but he did not do that so that is the level of surrender all reversals in our life will um, that what is to take away from this the reversals in our life like maharaj parikshit had um are are telling us something that we cannot be happy um in this world perpetually that even if there is a happy, happy so called happiness it is always temporary and that happiness has a higher potential to give us miseries um so when we look at the reversals there is always opportunity for us uh, of for the purification and um as giriraj shila giriraj maharaj says that every reversal uh, in our life 
uh, every time in our life, um, if we are in the right consciousness, it will take us one step closer to the Supreme Personality of God. I found Giriraj Maharaj's statement absolutely amazing. It's simply phenomenal. Uh, the way he said that, his, his conviction is, um, obviously, um, he was... He was From, uh, from Prabhupada. Um, so, uh, Kunti Devi also says the same in her prayers, Vipada Shantuta Shishwat Tatra Tatra Jagat Guru, Bhavato Darshanam Yasyat Pumir Bhagasham, which is a famous one. I'm, I'm sure all of you know that. Um, give me more miseries so that I don't have to face the um, this material world and I will always be there with, or you will always be there with me. It's, it's even more um, poetic in, in that terms that yes she has that assurance that whenever there will be a misery and whenever I will call you you will be there with me I um, that, that so much conviction she has in, in her prayers so um, as we can see um, her great grandson he used this curse to fix his mind on the personality of Godhead and um, So we can, what we can learn from this or from Srimad Bhagavatam, as His Holiness Bhakti Vinayana Goswami Maharaj says that uh, this is a life science. Srimad Bhagavatam is a life science. Um, every single um, problem and um, our questions has answers in Srimad Bhagavatam. In, in 18,000 verses, their commentaries by our Acharyas, by our um, by Shila Prabhupada, and our, in our discussions like this, um, we will always find a solution um, to every single prob problem or question in this material world. Um, of course, it depends on how purified consciousness is. That's how we will get the different dimensions of uh, our questions and our uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, situations. Um, the, now, three things we will discuss and then we will uh, have some time for um, comments or questions. So, a person who is in mode of goodness, um, that person will take the reversals in, the, in, in that person's life as a um, as, a, as a part of the purification. Uh, we all have disturbances in our lives, but we can't, res we can't resolve those permanently by manipulation or some temporary adjustments or by shying away from the responsibilities. That's not the possibility. The solution is to follow the prescribed duties at the best of our capacities in the, mo in the mood of devotion and there should be a mood of gratitude and pridelessness. Uh, and that gratitude is a seed of reciprocation with love and devotion. So that, that is the mode of goodness, um, how a person will face the reversal or, or their uh, lifespan. When a person is in mode of passion, or all activities are unsteady. I know sometimes bad feeling of guilt, if there is a feeling of guilt and unsteadiness, the productivity of our activities will, is not very high. It will be fairly less productive. And it will be not that efficient. It will be um, very inefficient if the person is in mode of passion. Um, earthly planet is in a mode of passion. And we can experience this situation um, around us and in our own life as well. The people, Kali Yuga is a, uh, it's, a, it's a worst combination actually. Kali Yuga is an is a age of ignorance. So the person will be a slave of lust, anger, greed, illusion, arrogance, envy, everything. And, and the person will try to find a solution by using his masters, which are these uh, lust, anger, greed. So the person, instead of surrendering to the uh, to the path of bhakti, the person will go in other direction. 
they will try to use this manipulative ideas their anger their greed and the illusion um, pride arrogance to find the solutions to the to the problems of this material world so three modes of material nature and three different approaches uh, the person will have for uh, the problems of this um, in in the material world and that's basically it uh, the we are discussing about this verse um and i think we will i will stop here if there are any questions or comments or any suggestions or any additions uh please uh unmute yourself and let us know <laughs> हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा क्वेश्चन और कमेंट इफ नॉट देन वी विल स्टॉप हियर टूडे हरे कृष्णा प्रभु यस हरे कृष्णा माता जी um the the question would be for yeah. an elevated soul like bhajit maharaj to to uh, create such an offense what's the message i mean it's <laughs> it's on it's unbelievable isn't it what he did yes so the if we see that offense it's not uh, something offense that uh, he would he should receive a curse for the uh, um, to die in seven days um it what he did is um it was a misunderstanding that he is a king and he was extremely thirsty so is it not the case that the king cannot to find water somewhere um he can very well find water so anyway he could have taken the water uh, from his um wherever uh, shamik rushi was sitting he could have taken it himself but he did he was not well received by shamik rushi but the misunderstanding is shamik rushi was in meditation um and that because of that misunderstanding um parikshit maharaj put that dead snake around his neck um of course apparently it is an offense but if that would not have happened um we would not have received shriman bhagavatam correct that's one second um that shows another thing is shows the greatness of parikshit maharaj parikshit maharaj says that i have committed an offense and whatever the reaction to this offense is let it come immediately um he did, he did not want to have a, to do the counter curse he did not want to make any adjustment he just accepted the, that as a providence as as the will of lord so yes that offense or apparent offense was compelled by the lord from the heart of parikshit maharaj to do that so that um shrimad bhagavatam will be spoken and it will be given to the uh, to the to the humanity now another thing is why lord did that is parikshit maharaj's body was also transcendent um, parikshit maharaj was searching for the lord so it's a reciprocation from the lord himself to take to call him back to his uh, to his abode and that is why this arrangement was done and we can see that in the case of uh, bhishma dev or all other great personalities um so bhishma dev was fighting against the supreme lord in in mahabharat but when we uh, eventually when we will read bhishma sthi when the prayers of bhishma dev um he saying that everything is arranged by him um by by you uh, by krishna himself so apparent offense is also arranged by this by the lord 
because that was the desire of uh, his devotee and that is the inner meaning of this pastime so what's it saying about us who are aspiring to be at a, a, a better level because he he actually breached this this humility really that yeah. that that is being preached to us and um for us to 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 keep up and not or it should be withheld so what is the message from yeah. that story so the learning i mean for, for yeah, us of course of course he did not actually breach the humility he was he, he had that humility but the way it happened is as i said this particular apparent offense was the reciprocation from the supreme lord for the desire of parikshit maharaj to bring him back to uh, the ultimate abode of the of of krishna and that's why this arrangement was done what we should learn from from it yes even if we are in the path of devotional service there is always a possibility that we may commit certain offenses against devotees against many people but instead of having that feeling of guilt because if we are in a mode of passion there will be the feeling of guilt but we should have that humility we should have that gratitude we should beg forgiveness and we should continue serving um uh, in in the mission of uh, shila prabhupad and our acharyas so that's the take away from from this uh, story very bold is not giving us permission to to <laughs> offend and, and and ask for forgiveness then is it yes yeah. yes it's not that we can do it deliberately we can keep committing offenses and ask for forgiveness mm. <laughs> yeah okay. offense and a mistake those are two different things mistake can happen unknowingly um and it is possible because we are in we are not we are in this age where we have a lot of faults we have propensity to cheat we have prop- uh, we have tendency to commit mistakes we are not perfect in any way our senses are not perfect so obviously it will happen but developing that mood of gratitude humility and servitude um, pridelessness all the virtues we are we were we were just discussing about then it will it is possible that yes path of purification um, there will be some acceleration acceleration in that thank you prabhu ji thank you Andri. thank you very much yeah hari krishna prabhu ji Please accept my endowment pranam. All praise to Shila Prabhupada. So thank you for a wonderful class. In a way, this also reminds me of King Rahugana and how for that for that more time he behaved at a bodily level and to bring out the Jada Bharat's um, exaltedness. Yeah. And I'm just wondering if Parikshit Maharaj. at that le- at that point behaved at a bodily level uh, to bring out the exaltedness of uh, um sutta Go- suktev goswami i just wondering if there is a correlation at all um parikshit maharaj is always a pure devotee maharaj yes okay yeah. king rahuguna needed that kind of uh, situation that kind of uh, nudge um <laughs> from <laughs> from jayadharat to come to his senses but in case of parikshit maharaj that was never been the case he was always a pure devotee he was his name itself indicate tells us that he was always um seeking shelter of the supreme personality of god so um as per my understanding this is just an arrangement of the lord um for uh, which is a perfect situation to bring parikshit maharaj back to Uh, the shelter of of the supreme lord and at the same time deliverance of shrimad bhagavatam which is beneficial to us and um bringing us together machita madgada prana bodhayanta parasparam kathayanta chamam nityam dushyanti charman kacha so we are also following the same or similar path so that's what uh, um, my understanding is No, that's very good prabhuji i had a little bit of a realization from your purport the churning bit initially and i was just thinking that we must never judge people based on their externals 
because yes. like Jada Bharat, like um, um, uh, uh, yeah, uh, and also people like uh, Vritra Sura and um, also Pundrik Pundrik Vidyanidhi. You know, they had they didn't fit into the standard uh, description that you gave of exalted people. Yes, and yet yes. they were very deep, and they had very deep realizations in bhakti. Um, so I suppose we must never judge people and 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 be cautious of not causing any Vaishnava prad just because we are looking at their externals. Yes, definitely, because um, when we are judgmental about somebody else, that means we are not confident about the. Um, the greatness of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. We are not confident about the greatness of the devotees and we are not confident about the possibility of purification of every single living entity in the material world. Then we will be judgmental because we can, we can think of the faults in our mind and that will be the reflection in other personalities, other people. Then only there will be a judgment, right? Otherwise, we, we don't have to be judgmental. Prabhuji, could you repeat those four, four factors that you said? Why would people judge? Sorry, that's really nice. Um, when, when we don't have a confidence in the glories um, what Lord has um, imparted in us, in every single mm -hmm. person, in every single living entity, um, when we don't have a, enough faith in the, in the opulences of the Lord, in the path of purification he has given to us, and if we think of the faults in our own mind, we will see that reflection in others. Yes. <laughs> and that's what we can Very nice. learn from the story of uh, Yudhishthir Maharaj and Duryodhan. Because he was thinking those faults in his mind. So he could see the faults everywhere else. Mm -hmm. Yudhishthira Maharaj never thought of faults in his mind. He always thought of the, thought about the glories of the great qualities uh, of, from the Supreme Lord. And he could see those qualities in everybody. So yeah. that's the major difference. Yes, very nice. Very nice. Thank you, Prabhuji. Very nice. Thank, Thank you, Prabhuji. So if there are no other questions. We will stop here. And yeah, thank you very much for your attendance. And it is purifying to me to discuss Srimad Bhagavatam in your presence. So I'm really grateful to you. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna, everybody. Thank Hare you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Thank you. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Thank you, everybody, for your lovely association.